Welcome back to the video blog. Adam Daniel Mase is my name. PMD for Hire, your producer of marketing and distribution, producer of marketing and distribution.com. So, as most of you know, if you've been following the video blog this week, I've been doing a whole host of independent film reviews, sneak previews, doc reviews, film reviews for the excellent website run by David Brannan and Karen Warden. Karen Warden, David Brannan. It's called Film Courage. Filmcourage.com, and there you can check out what's on offer. It's a site for independent filmmakers, for the community, chock-a-block with resources. In any event, yesterday I watched James Kerwin's Yesterday Was Alive for the second time. It's a noir-esque throwback film shot in black and white, which is a psychological thriller containing a whole heck of a lot of scientific information, and a lot of stuff that I wouldn't say that I didn't understand, but it's not something that you would necessarily intuitively gravitate towards, which only proves to me that James Curran is a brainiac of the highest order. This is the second time I'm watching a film this week where I'm watching filmmakers that have like an exceptionally high developed degree of intellectual power. That and Mike Riley, of course, um, from the previous film that I watched this week, Road to Victory. And basically the film stars Kipley Brown, Va Va Voom. I mean, she's an actress that can like totally knock you out and she's got like a 250 excuse me, 250 IQ, Chase Masterson, who played singer in a supporting role, who actually produced the film as well. Then there was John Newton and Mick Sciarra in a supporting role, with Jason, Jason Cochard on the cinematography. Way to go, Jason, in the way that you dutched things. I really like the way that you use the jigs and the jib, the jib angles and various stuff coming on from top and below. Great stuff. Totally great film. Black and white. My kind of movie. I'm a huge noir fan. Little Caesar, Double Indemnity, The Champion, Kirk Douglas, anything that Cagney was in. I love old throwback noir, out of the past. You name it, I've seen it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So this film was basically about the subconscious, the universal subconscious, the Jungian philosophy, Jungian psychology, a lot of stuff like that. A little bit of messing with the timeline, a little bit on the memento tip, a little backwards, forwards. It's PG rated. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on there. You gotta watch it a couple of times because James, the director, writer, he really sort of goes there with the film. And I'm gonna be writing a review for it. This is the video review. I'm gonna take a stab at it now by video and then I'm gonna try to go about it in writing and I'm sure I'm gonna have a difficult time because it's gonna be very difficult for me to describe the plot. But the basic fact of the matter is that there is something else going on in the universe that defies the standard linear timeline, past, past, present, future. There's another parallel or parallel timelines that are ongoing at the same time that a human being is able to access. And what the film posits is that whatever you think is going on in a linear time capacity, in fact, can be messed with, shuffled like a deck of cards, thrown about like a set of dice, and basically confused whatever you think is you know, whatever you think was and is and is going to be is not basically the situation. And what James uh, Kerwin does is he kind of uses these ex excellently super charismatic actors to deliver his otherwise complex dialogue lines. I asked for a copy of the screenplay because I want to see how this thing actually comes together on paper. I want to see the mechanics of the shooting script and how James actually put this together. But he's been very helpful in supplying a bunch of different resources. Um, he's got a great little insert on his DVD. I recommend that you take a look at this DVD which is available off of his website, yesterdaywasalie.com. There's an insert in there. It's like one scene from the film in the bar. It's a graphic novel, great transmedia extension telling the story through other media channels. I like that. The guy really knows what he's doing. He's harnessed self-distribution and he has a really good executive production and production team backing him up. I think Chase and Kipley are extraordinary drop, extraordinary, drop dead gorgeous women. Hands down, as physical specimens, they're absolutely gorgeous. I would, I would melt walking beside them, walking into like a film premiere. And they are exceptionally, exceptionally gifted actresses. Every single one of the players that James casted for this film really know what they're doing. Even Mick Sciarra, who played the trench coat man, totally, totally had the timing, was bang on. I was really impressed. And on the second viewing of the film, I liked it even better because I watched it with subtitles. I didn't want to miss a dialogue beat. It's very rare that I'll watch a film a second time 
an independent film because I have a lot of them to watch. But this one I took the extra hour and a half out of my schedule to watch, and I'm glad that I did, and I watched the bonus features on James uh, Curran's recommendation. So there you have it. Yesterday was a lie.com. Go and have a look at that film, or go on over to Film Courage, and tell David and Karen if you want me to review your independent film, and they'll get you my coordinates so that you can send me a screener copy or a streaming copy. So there you have it. Take a look at that film. One more film coming this week, and of course we have The Grab Ass coming up on Friday. Thanks again for sitting through this. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I wish for you... many good things. Of course, you can put your logo here on this cup, and if you have mugs, send them on over to me and I'll make sure that they get into the right places. Take care.